Good morning. Welcome to my pre-class series for Intermediate Financial Accounting 2. Today we're going to take a look at shareholders' equity, our chapter 15 from our textbook. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on a couple of the basic things, a couple different examples that will help you, as always, make the class a really great learning experience. Let's get started. Our first example, we're talking about selling and buying back preferred shares. What I'm introducing here is an account called Contributed Surplus. And we're going to use Contributed Surplus a number of times throughout this course and you're going to see us using it now for the first time. And again, we'll see it a few more times. And the purpose, the effective use of Contributed Surplus and why, and the key is why, we're using Contributed Surplus. So through an example, I'll be able to explain that to you. So let's complete the journal entries. Our first one, we have a thousand preferred shares. We just sold them for a hundred dollars per share. So pretty straightforward journal entry. Cash, hundred thousand. Preferred shares, hundred thousand. Now over time, companies may want to buy back some of their shares for a number of reasons. Let's say this company is very successful, has a lot of extra cash, and they just want to buy them back. So in this part B of the example, they repurchased and canceled 200 of their preferred shares. Now they paid $90 a share to do this. So let's start with the easiest parts. Well, if they paid $90 a share, they paid $18,000. The preferred shares themselves have a value of $100, so therefore the preferred shares have $200,000 of value. $20,000 of value, sorry. And again, we paid $18,000 in cash. Well, we know debits must equal credits. Debits don't equal credits here. We are short $2,000 on the credit side. So let's think about this. We s issued something for $100, bought it back for $90. Well, great. That worked out really well for us we basically made $10 a share. The challenge that we have is that we can't run that through our income statement because that's not our operations. Our operations are about inventory, cost of goods sold, revenue. That's our normal operation. This was an equity activity. If we were to put these gains through our income statement, it would manipulate our net income. It would manipulate our performance. It would make it very hard for us to look at our trends and how we're doing with our normal business over the years. So what we want to do is we put this and we keep it in the equity section and we put it to the account called contributed surplus. And that's where it goes, into the equity. Nothing in here will go into our income statement. Now let's go take a look at part C. Again, we decided to repurchase and cancel some shares, and we repurchased 300 this time at $120 per share. Well, let's do the journal entry there. Start with the cash. That's the simplest. Cash, 36,000. And again, that's credit cash because we're buying these back. The bond, not the shares, have a $100 value. So preferred shares, 300 times 100, that will give us a value equal to 30,000. Now, this doesn't equal. We're actually short on the debit side here. So what do we do now? This is one of the things, and this is why I'm going over this with you right now, is that make sure you look at historical transactions. Were there any transactions historically related to preferred shares? And in this case, there were. There was this one in Part B. So with this historical look, what we have to do is we have to look at and say, is there any outstanding contributed surplus related to these preferred shares? The answer is yes. So what we have to do is we have to use that up first before we put any balance to retained earnings. So we have a contributed surplus balance of 2000 
we have to get rid of that. We've got to take that down to zero in this case. So contributed surplus, taking it down to zero, means that we'll debit 2,000 here. Now, we're still short. 30, 36, 2, we're still short $4,000. Well, in this case, we're paying more the preferred share than we issued them for. So we're going to take that difference out of retained earnings. So retained earnings will be 4,000. Now our journal entry balances. Key thing, the key takeaway is make sure you look at previous transactions. Is there an outstanding contributed surplus for this share? If this contributed surplus was for common shares, we wouldn't use it. It has to be for the same class of shares. So because this was preferred shares, contributed surplus balance from a previous transaction, we'll use it up first and then if we're still short, we'll go through our retained earnings. Let's move to our second example. The second example is about dividends. We've got $85,000 of dividends being paid to the preferred and common shareholders. Preferred shareholders have first right to the dividends based on their terms. So they get paid first. And then if there's any remaining monies, those monies will go to the common shareholders. But again, the key thing in this question is look at the terms. So we've got $200,000 worth of preferred shares. The preferred shares pay 75 cents per share and there's 50,000 shares. We've got $300,000 worth of common shares and the number of common shares is 30,000. So again, what I'm talking about is we have to focus very heavily here on terms. So A, the shares, the preferred shares are non-cumulative. B, the preferred shares are cumulative. How does that change our answer? The last bit of data and information that we have to focus on is that no dividends have been declared in the previous year. So there's one year, the previous year, where no dividends were declared. Now, how do you solve this? How do you solve A based on the terms of A? Well, because it's non-cumulative, that means that if a year is missed, you're out of luck. You do not go back and recapture that missed year. So for part A, the preferred shareholders, common shareholders, the preferred shareholders will only get the current amount. So 50,000 times 75 cents means that they will get 37,500. And because they're non-cumulative, they won't get this missing year. So the remainder will go entirely to the common shareholders. And as you can see, there's our $85,000. That's the key thing to make sure you look at. For part B, the preferred shareholders are cumulative, which means that if a year is missed, that has to be paid before we can get into the current year. So that changes it now. So the preferred shareholders, common shareholders, there's going to be the arrears. The preferred shareholders, they're going to get that. They're also going to get first right in the current year, 37,500. The remainder now will go to the common shareholders, 10,000. There's your 85,000, but notice the big difference now. The common shareholders get a lot less because the preferred shareholders were a cumulative type of share. So I hope this helps. I hope that this will allow you to have a great class. Thank you very much.